Okay, so we are moving on to drawing hair. Wait, how do you spell hair? And we're going to be drawing this. So rather than go through a bunch of different little constructive drawings and stuff this time, I'm going to instead just go for drawing one. And the reason for that is because I think it'll be helpful for you guys to see the process that I go through for that. And so let's get into it. I'll probably be using a few different brushes. The normal round brush, which you use on Photoshop or whatever. I'll also be using this brush that I have that is called the Basic Painterly Flat, which comes from Katie Silva, who was an old student at Watts. Well, she's not old, but she was an old student at Watts. And she made this awesome brush pack that has a bunch of really nice things in it, but the main ones that I use are the Basic Painterly Flat and this one called Pushing Paint Around which really helps you get some traditional painting effects inside of the digital painting thing. So if I'm relating all these tools to drawing with charcoal on newsprint or whatever, then it's really basically the same tools as just having a charcoal pencil and smudging around with your finger. It's just a different way of applying it. And I probably will also use a bit of the uh, blender brush or blur brush. So that's that. Let's go ahead and get into it. Gonna start with a really basic head. I'm not really gonna be doing too much on the face just because that would take way longer. So it's mostly just gonna be focused on the hair, which hopefully I'll be able to do in about an hour or so. Obviously we're drawing through the form on some of these parts, the top of her head, her neck and everything like that. But this is a great image just for showing some of the basics that you wanna know about when doing hair. This contour of the face. Don't see the ear in this one, so that's one less thing that we have to draw. Okay, so that's our basic head, more or less. Maybe put in just a couple of constructive lines for that brow line and center line, but I want to keep that pretty simple. And now I'm going to go ahead and start doing the hair shape. Now the hair comes off of the skull, it has volume. I'm going to look to build that hair with those basic CSI shapes that we learn. Where I'm just building all this stuff with 
curved lines, straight lines, and C curves. C curves, S curves, straights. Now there's a lot of extra information going on down here, but I'm just going to attempt to look past all of that and go more for the general movement of this stuff. It's going to get a little bit closer to her head from back here. She does have bangs, which go basically right over her brow. The idea with this really is that we need to not be drawing hair as a series of lines like this, but rather as a big mass. Imagine that you were a sculptor and somebody gave you an assignment to sculpt a bust of somebody and they give you a big block of clay. Well, how you would start doing that hair is not doing one little strand of hair at, the at a time, but you would start with the big mass. So what we're trying to do right here is just start with that big mass, basically. Try to see if we can get that nailed down. And we're going to be looking to do some pretty heavy redesigning here as well. Because we can't really copy it, you know, strand for strand, let's say. It really has to be redesigned in an appropriate way. So that's kind of our big starting place for this. Just like with every kind of drawing that we do, we really have to interpret these forms rather than try to copy them. So now that I've got this general placement down more or less, I can start breaking up some of these shapes into slightly smaller facets. Start to get some of these curls and things like that happening because she does have some curls, but we've got one big separation happening up here. And with this, what I'm going to look to do is basically try to identify the flow of the hair. Something kind of like this. And you're going to try to see if I can break up those, some of those pieces into manageable chunks. So I see one right here. And that hair always follows the form of the head in terms of lighting. The hair itself sometimes may not really follow much of the form of the head at all if the person has, say, some kind of gelled up hairstyle or something like that. They may very well have hair that goes up like this. 
but it'll still, in general, follow the same lighting scheme of the head, and we'll get to that in a few moments. Okay, and we've got more. Coming down this way. Again, this stage is really all about identifying the flow. Like what directions are the strands really going? And her hair is a little all over the place, especially in this area that I'm at right now. And I basically want to just try to identify these big chunks. Try to say where some are overlapping others, like right here we could say that we have got some overlaps happening. And that hair starts up at that root and then goes over, goes over. one sneaking out from right here. This one kind of coming in front. This is all the setup for that two value stage. And that two value stage is really going to be the most important part of this whole thing. At least as far as getting like some good lighting down and realism and rendering and all that stuff. These same principles apply if you want to do something a bit more stylized as well. So I'm thinking for our purposes today, this is probably going to be good enough. But at this stage, really, you want to use, maybe start expanding past those CSI principles a little bit to just get into a little bit of more accurate shapes. And again, finding that flow more, that rhythm movement. Kind of the same way that we use the Riley abstraction to find that, you know, those two tr opposing triangles and how those triangles bend through space. If we need to try to, you know, draw the figure in like a different perspective or something or a different, uh, kind of stance or something like that. They're not static, right? They flow. So this is, you know, we're, we're trying to enhance that flow even more with a 
with these same kind of ideas. Don't need to get super duper specific, but something like this should be good enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna go move into adding some value. And might as well just move this right in the middle before I do that, at least up here. Or why not actually make it fill up the whole screen? And just go back a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got our under layer, and let's add some tone. So I'm going to start and just add a green base to work from. So that's going to make these orange warm tones really sing off of that, which is going to be nice. And why not add a little bit of a gradation? It's a little bit extreme. Gradations are always good. down just very slightly okay and one other thing I'm gonna do that's slightly more technique -y kind of thing I guess is to just make my uh, my lines oops let's see I want to actually maybe lighten is not what I'm looking for that's fine. Kind of make my lines a little bit of a darker red kind of color. So it's going to look nice as we sort of get into that. So now I've got my lines. That's not really a drawing thing necessarily. It's just uh, kind of more like a painting thing. When you lay in your painting, doing it with some nice red is usually pretty nice. Get some skin tone in here. Slight color variations. Let's try to get this value a little bit more accurate because right now it's very bright. Her face is basically all in shadow in this. Receiving a little bit of uplighting and stuff from the pavement, but not too, too much. Go a tad darker.
Okay, a little bit of this nose and stuff. And maybe just some slightly cooler tones. On the front part. Okay, and let's go put in color of her hair, local color. It's going to be kind of this orangey sort of color. It's pretty similar to her skin tone, actually. So a few of these things that I'm doing right here are, they're pretty peripheral, or I guess specific more to just like painting in general and like color stuff and things like that. But if I was drawing, then basically what I would be doing is what I'm right about to show you. Just go ahead and finish up putting this local color in for her hair. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is break this up now into a two value statement that's going to be really effective. I want to make sure that I get my value dark enough. And basically, I just want to start looking for the different places that I can start breaking this up. Start, again, enhancing that flow more and more and more. Let's actually do it on another layer. Oops. And I actually want to do it over the line work now. But basically, at, at this point, the goal is to really get to that place of that two value drawing uh, in that handout. So we want to really be cognizant and aware of how we are designing our shapes and what they're looking like. I'm actually using a brush that I didn't mention in the top. Again, not that that really matters for most of you guys, but this was one called Underpaint, which was from a guy named Dave Greco. And his brush kind of looks like this. It's kind of like a textury sort of thing. Uh, Dave Greco is an awesome illustrator. Does a lot more stylized type stuff, works for Hearthstone and I think Magic and stuff like that. But again, basically what I'm doing, looking to do here is finesse my two value design. And I kind of want to, at least for me right now, I kind of want to try to really lock down this two value design as a, a very graphic element before really getting into doing a lot of stuff with like edges and things. As far as the color goes, I've really basically just chosen like a dark red. Squinting my eyes down a lot as well. To 
try to see if I can find that nice, those nice shapes. The success of your drawing is really dependent upon this stage and how well you design your shapes in this stage. Because ultimately you can make your, your drawing look, or painting or whatever look really complicated and cool, but that all starts with this two value. The reason I like this little underpaint brush is because it, uh, I feel like it has a little bit of texture on it, which I kind of like. Now, one important thing I noticed here when I looked, was looking at this reference, this loop right here, it's got these two pieces right here, and it kind of makes like a W shape. I am intentionally changing that so that it is not symmetrical. Because if I draw that symmetrically, then it's just going to look bad. Maybe that sounds like a bit of a oversimplification, but it's true. It's just not really going to look as good if, if you draw things that are really repetitive. Hair has a lot of really repetitive shapes to it, and it's going to be pretty important to not repeat things too much. There's a lot of halftone, like all this along the side of her head, that's all halftone. So I'm part going with what I see and part redesigning based on what I want to see. Sort of trying to round out this bottom section a little bit more. Because I think it might look a little bit better that way. By creating soft edges, you really do baby step your way into halftone. But we'll get to the half tones in a minute. It's really helpful, in my opinion, to just really like do this process very judiciously. Like really do the two value, try to really design out all your shapes, make them really interesting and really, again, same problem here where I was starting to do this and it was getting too even. So I'm going to bring this one up a little bit more. Maybe we'll think about bringing this strand down a little bit more like it is in the reference, and that'll end up being more of a halftone situation going on. I'll put in a little halftone if it means that it's going to help me out. I don't want to completely exclude myself from something and make it harder on me. Like this area is more halftone, but just to define that strand a little bit more, I felt like I kind of needed to do it. But a bit of a contradiction because I was just saying like it's really important to you know really try to do the steps one at a time. It really is unless you feel like you need to go into the other the other zone for some reason. Like unless you feel like you really need to to expand into Uh, expand into why well, I cannot draw and talk at all right now. If you need to expand into the next section, there's a saying that Eric would say sometimes, which is gesture before structure unless structure leads to the next gesture. And that's really in reference to like figure drawing, but it can be applied to uh, to this as well. Again, just trying to look for some of that flow, try to create these nice little shapes. 
something that I really learned at least about digital painting, which can be extended to the wider world of just mark making in general, was um, from a guy named Shadi Safadi, who ran a studio called One Pixel Brush, I think. And he had some old digital art painting, uh, digital painting tutorials. And uh, they were really helpful for just learning some of the basics. And he really talks a lot in that about like, just the importance of shapes and designing good shapes and really why that is important. So I'm originally, again, this is kind of specific to digital, but originally I had these two separated on different layers, the two value and the local color. But now I'm kind of starting to work in between them a little bit just because I feel like that's it's going to be most helpful to me. So interestingly, we've got some strands that are they're almost like catching a little bit of light on the front of her head here, or the front here, and I don't those are almost a little bit more detailing. and I want to try to keep it a little bit more mass and like big block oriented right now. This is going to look quite boring for a while until we actually get into doing the half tones and making it look fun. Just so you know, a lot of this we can basically just block out as it's all in shadow. Important when working with color to try to get those values right as well. Again, there's some darker values in here as well, but we're ultimately going to keep our shadows really simple. That's going to help us as we get a little bit further down the line. If you're wondering what these little variations are, again, this is a digital painting thing, but uh, this brush that I'm using has color jitter on it, which is a setting. Change brush tip color, and I have it set to a variation of 6 for hue, saturation, and luminosity, so you can change all those things. And that just actually puts that right over here. Or I can turn that on and off if I wanted to, so now that'll just be standard, or if I turn it back on, you know, I'll have some of those variations. Kind of a nice way to get a little more variety into your digital stuff. So I'm I'm oversimplifying this a bit right now. Like if you look at the reference, there's little strands and all kinds of stuff happening. But I'm just trying to keep it at two value for the most part right now. I think these we can merge together now at this point. Because I have this step by step on the handout. Even this one, it's like, eh, I'm not sure if I'd really want to get into doing that too much. These little pieces and stuff. Right now, I mostly want to try to concern myself with the big picture stuff, as I was saying. Again, she's got a little bit of light hitting this other side. So we can try to create a cool shape out of that. And it's kind of fluffy and round. I want to try to connect your shapes as much as possible. So we want to concern ourselves with that flow, but we also want to try to keep the different facets of the drawing connected together. 
keep the light groups connected to the light groups and the dark groups not. That's why we have like these shapes over here. And I'm questioning whether I actually want to make those that light or not. I'll go with what the reference has for right now, but I may ultimately decide to actually knock those back into more of a, a darker halftone kind of look because it might be a little too distracting to have it kind of like that, like it is. Again, down here, we're just getting a lot of shadow and things happening. The name of the game really is Design Cool Shapes. And how do you know when you're doing that? You just kind of get a feel for it after you try to do it enough times. That's where doing like master studies and things like that really helps. So it helps you know, like you start to understand like what good shapes really look like because you don't really have a good understanding of that in the beginning usually. Maybe you do. I, I think I had a little bit more of a natural inclination, inclination to being good at shapes when I was starting out. I don't know why. It was just something I felt like just shape design in general was something that kind of made sense to me. It's like, just make, try to make it look good. <laughs> okay. And then you kind of have a sense somehow of what looks good and what doesn't already just you know, aesthetics. I think that's what people mean sometimes when they say like, ah, oh, that person doesn't, does or doesn't have good taste. If they don't have good taste in their design sense can be lacking potentially. At least that's what I would take that as meaning. So at a certain point here, I'm going to start going and softening my edges a little bit more aggressively. I, think I can probably take this up a little bit more. We've got a lot of halftone happening around the sides there. And this is kind of, I think actually I do want to knock most of this back right now because it's getting a little distracting to look at that. Kind of keep that. I can layer some other individual strands on top of that later and increase some of that lighting and things. For now, I think just something kind of like that is probably good. Okay, and let's look again at our reference and say, I think it. That whole dome effect kind of happens. Just kind of shade this like a sphere. And then go and pull out some individual little crisper blocks. Knock back some of these little strands that I had originally identified, some of those rhythm lines. Now getting to a stage more like this. Let's see here. I'm liking where this is headed. Okay, so, but in drawing, same exact stuff. Drawing with newsprint, charcoal and everything. Do your lay-in, find your shadow pattern. Of course, I had a couple of little extra steps here, but it's not anything that's too complicated, really. I 
all my uh, hair here is basically one color in the shadow, which as I move forward, I'll kind of oops, start to uh, finesse that a little bit. But now I'm going to go ahead and take this other brush here, and I'm going to start doing some softening passes on some of this stuff. This is where you're going to see some of this start to really come to life a little bit more. And why not? Let's see if we can add some color jitter to this as well. Could be kind of cool. This little in Clip Studio, this little eye just puts it over on the side so you can see it here. So that gives us kind of a similar sort of look as the uh, the other brush that we were using. Okay, so with some of this softening pass that you do, you really don't want to overdo it and then really start losing your shapes. I want to try to keep it pretty true to that that two value that you established. Then once I really start to soften up some of these and get this to really start to feel, tighten up some other edges and soften others. Once I really get that, there's one piece that I'm missing right here. I'm going to start to put in more of those half tones and things. And the softening and doing the half tones kind of happens in one step. So we start to get that main light breakup happening. Feeling like I might want some brightness or something behind on this part just to try to pop that edge forward. Because these colors are very similar in value right now, so if you squint your eyes down, it kind of all gets lost together, except for this little orange speck. Similar to drawing, I'm gonna, when I start putting in more of my half tones and stuff, I'm gonna start going across the form a little bit more. Very similar to drawing, just regular old, regular old drawing. And keep in mind that I'm attempting to keep these half tone groups really lighter than the shadows. And I'm mostly looking to get these half tones reading as just like big, big shapes and big groups. Some of my half tones might end up coming kind of close to the shadow values. That's just kind of all in the realm of trying to get those soft edges and things. We've got some half tone happening on the head, top of the head. Seems counterintuitive because you think the light source is coming from the top, but in fact, we have that highlight running all across here. And on the top, we actually have some half tone. Start to break up some of those soft edges a little bit more. try to make sure that I don't lose some of my crisp shapes, but I can always go and put them back in if I need to. I am changing this area down at the bottom here to be more of a coherent kind of look because it gets pretty messy and crazy. But you can see with this technique and this method of building it up really slowly, 
if you start to look back from it, it really does start to look pretty three-dimensional. And as we actually start to build in some of these highlights, let's go ahead and get a darker value and start to push some of those darker values into the shadows. Maybe a little darker than that. That's good. So sometimes in drawing, you hear that stage of like, I'll go in and find your darkest darks. Well, the way I like to do it is I kind of like to work up to those darker darks a little bit more. I don't necessarily like to put in the darkest dark right out of the gate. I'm basically looking to try to identify the different flows of these locks of hair. And if I can track a little bit like, oh yeah, that one's coming down right through there. Then we have another little separation happening as it moves into shadow. And another little separation happening as it moves into shadow. It's a very, very helpful and constructive way to work in my opinion. That's can really help get you good results consistently. Okay, we have definitely some darker darks happening up here. Again, we want to think about, okay, we've got this coming down here. So maybe I have one that comes over more like this way. All about them shapes. And then edges are kind of a secondary thing. Edges are a stylistic choice. Right? So if you're trying to uh, give something a very specific style, you give it very graphic edges, very graphic shapes. You make your edges very realistic or not very realistic or somewhere in between. And then when we have the added benefit of color as well, we could actually pop in some cooler notes inside of the shadows of this hair and it'll really start to look pretty cool. But we'll get to that in a bit. Right now I'm just focused again with trying to get some of these shadows to feel pretty solid. Okay, big dark shape here. That color jitter really helps out a little bit too in digital. So I would suggest playing around with that if you're into doing stuff digitally at all. Digital is really fun, really great tool to learn in my opinion. Some people are very die hard, like, um, you know, against using digital, but really is one of the best learning tools out there and you kind of sell yourself short a little bit if you're saying I'm not going to use that just because XYZ that's my opinion at least but whatever um, so as we did with the general two value design we were really specific and careful about how we designed these shapes right so even as we get into these shadows more. Let's get some half tone along this. Even as we get into these shadows, um, we want to make sure that we keep our shapes nice and appealing as well. Mind you, all of this is being done without any highlights yet. We'll get to highlights in a minute. But everything here is done without highlights. It's done shape conscious, trying to really be aware of things and really kind of think through the process of all these little curls and things that happen in the hair. 
keep this edge sharp for now. Can be a little softer on this side. Shapes, shapes, shapes. Shapes, values, edges. You can try to even put a little bit of a reflected core shadow, a reflected light core shadow on this little lock. I really like this shape here, so I'm not going to mess with it too much. Okay, we actually have a little shadow value on this one itself that I missed. And in a little bit here, we'll also get to overlapping some of those lighter tones and how that can really, really make things look cool too. Overlapping some of those half tones with lighter strokes and then you kind of get this really cool like layered effect. That will happen a lot down in this area as well. Because even though I'm changing it some, we do want to still utilize the reference and really try to make it look really cool if we can. Um, you know, and utilize those pieces of the reference that, that make it appealing. If possible, we can definitely do that. Nice thing about this little flat brush from Katie Silva is uh, the fact that it it kind of blends out while it also puts marks down. So it's very similar to a traditional. Her brushes are very closely mimic a lot of traditional stuff, a lot of traditional looks, which is why I like them so much. Keep those shapes in mind. Like, it might not seem like it, but every single shape on here I am intentionally designing to try to make look cool. I can't remember if I said this in one of the earlier things, but like, it might seem like I'm just like talking along and painting and sketching or whatever, but I'm, I'm thinking critically about everything that's happening here. I'm not really, at this point, I'm not really leaving anything up to chance. Like trying to say, you know, track this stuff down and say, hey, these shapes kind of have a cool balance to them. We can cut out some of them a little bit more because her forehead is going to appear through there slightly. And we can go and start to finesse some of this stuff a little bit more as well. And we could probably get a little bit more accurate to the reference now as far as certain aspects of this happening. It's all intentional. Nothing is happening by accident. Okay, we can start to pull back in our half tones slightly into some of those gr big gradations that we made. And pull out more like kind of locks and things happening. Some of the texture you think of when you think of hair. Even up to this point, I've not really done much to try to get the texture of the hair other than using a brush that has a little bit of texture with it. And with your pencil, that's basically just a, a uh, you know, as you shade with your pencil, it kind of does that because it leaves some grit down and use that grit for, uh, you know, getting some, leaving some of that texture in there. Okay, here we can start to bring in some more of these start to carve out more like, again, layers and little things happening. Stay within the value range that we've established at this point, I think is probably pretty good. Hair can be pretty tricky to draw or paint. 
I find it's much easier to paint actually than it is to draw, but all these same principles apply. And some of these original lines that I have, you could still see them just barely. These are just going to help me guide my strokes a little bit as to what I want that flow to be. And I'll just, I'll partially do that through just like painting as well and drawing back and forth between these shapes. But there's a point where you kind of stop looking at your reference as much and just start kind of putting your own little interpretations into stuff. trying to get really more and more subtle with it. You see how it's a process of like, you really work from the big stuff down to the small stuff. And the more time you end up spending in the smaller stage, the more complicated and kind of cool of a look you're going to get. One thing to keep in mind, also something that I learned from that shoddy safari digital painting uh, video from years ago that I watched, was you spend more time on it to make it look like you spent less time on it. It's a very important thing to remember. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase my value slightly because I want to see if I can get a bit of a stroke kind of happening over overlapping the other one. Very slight value range increase. This is kind of what I mean when you start like finding certain strokes that you want to overlap others. Because so I originally had this just going down straight, but now I've kind of brought it over a little bit. I can bring sub strands off of that down into some of these other pieces. And you start to see that it really does start to look like pretty complicated hair and stuff. But I just followed that simple process. It can get you really far. Now some of these I feel like I'm actually definitely going to knock back into halftone a bit more. And at the end I'll kind of put some put some more interesting strokes over in, in those areas. This area. So I feel like that's breaking down my lighting a bit too much and it's not really working the way I want it to. Now these values between the hair and this eye socket and stuff are really close. They're really close in the reference too. The shadow values of the hair and the eye socket there. So this area will really come to life when I get some of those lighter values in, I think, later on. I want to try to find and remain, uh, keep that balance of straights and curves, as well as that balance of uh, hard and soft shapes. So 
got this coming and passing in front of the other one. And then we can take one of the one piece of this. Maybe see if we can overlap it over here somehow. I really like this shape right here, so I want to maybe you don't want to necessarily paint around around shapes too much. Might be better to maybe do something like this. Hmm. It's okay. But figuring out these little single strands and strokes and stuff that come out are, you know, it's a much later thing that happens. Just want to keep reminding you that the biggest thing that we did was establish that two value, which is allowing us to do all of this effectively. If we didn't have the two value, then this would be really hard right now. Okay, we lost some of these shapes. Go ahead and put them back in a little bit. I see a good opportunity to grab a lighter. Maybe just hit something a little bit lighter coming off of that. Down here. Let's break into some lighter tones. Try to see if we can go with kind of like a yellowy sort of golden color. It's looking good. Try to see if similar to those half tones, we can kind of get a consistent sort of statement, but with these highlights. But I do want to be just a little more careful about how I'm dancing around some of these uh, some of these highlights and shapes because I've got some good shapes in there now. I don't want to completely lose all of them. You know, I don't want to lose all that work I did basically. Now, in the reference, the lighting is just as strong on this side as it is on this side. But another intentional change that I'm going to make is to basically go ahead and make the lighting more intense in this middle section. Now, I wonder how it would look if we get some purpley, like purpley strokes in here. Much cooler, the purple. Sometimes, at least as far as color goes, getting a nice contrast, even if it's maybe a warmer light scenario, which this one is actually a bit cooler, really. Getting some warm, cool vibration is not a bad idea. And since we put in a little bit of a yellowy tone, a purplish tone on top of that, or purplish uh, hue on top of that, is going to look pretty good because purple and yellow our contrasting colors and contrasting colors look good and vibrate off of each other. A 
you can see just how much brighter this highlight value is than the cheek. Let's see what we can do also to maybe get a brighter saturated orange going on in here as well. It's going to hopefully help give it a little bit of that shimmer. Find some spots to drop that off. sneak in some blues. Let's find out. We want to pop that blue over here actually. I don't know if that's going to be too, probably too vibrant. It needs to be a little more gray I think. Maybe? Take our trusty pushing paint around brush. Now this kind of effect you can't exactly get in charcoal and newsprint. This is more digital painting centric. But Similar to how yellow and purple are contrasting colors, blue and orange are as well. And obviously she's got orange hair. So we can maybe do something with that. Switch back to our blue and maybe go through on this side as well. Easier to do this in just a study situation where you kind of vignette it like this, but honestly much, much harder to do if you're trying to have this whole thing fit into a big illustration or a finished painting. By this whole thing, I mean this hair study. Uh, because then you have to get all the pieces of it to work with the, all the lightings the same consistently across the whole thing. It's just pretty difficult. Okay, let's go back to our blender, kind of like impasto, sort of whatever. I don't really have a method for this, so I just kind of scribble it around. Hair is very fun to make painterly and cool, in my opinion. Doing hair really uptight is not something I like to or I'm even really good at. And by uptight, I don't mean that as an insult to anybody who likes painting tight, but it's just not my thing. It's really, it's really not. Sometimes you got to just know yourself a little bit. And certainly doing really tight paintings, it's not really my thing.
Okay, now we can actually take this brush that we have to try to see if we can pull a few strokes out. Now this is the kind of thing that's it's harder to do in drawing. Because obviously you don't have a wet medium that you can mess around with. But basically what we're trying to do with this is just see see what we can do to create more overlaps. So with drawing, depending on what type of materials you're using, you have to be a little bit more meticulous as far as uh, as far as kind of planning things out a little bit more. Painting, you can sort of lose it and then find it and lose it and find it and, you know, kind of do it like that. Which really, for me, is kind of how I like to work a little bit more, but not if you're trying to do a final finished painting. If you're trying to do a final thing, then sometimes you just need to really plan things out. At least that's been my experience so far. some of this texture in here. The texture really comes last. Switch over to my blur. Yeah, that texture and that detail and all that stuff, that comes last. Wish I had time to actually do the face on this as well. Maybe I'll finish it at some point. Okay, I'm gonna go one more layer on top and see if I can maybe just take my basic one here. more. Maybe see if we can enhance these just slightly on the hair. These highlights, get them to pop just a little bit more, a little more reflective. Try to make my shapes nice little hard ones. Think hard and soft on all this stuff like good tile or shape should have one side that's soft and one side that's a little harder usually again that's that's a stylistic thing but maybe let's see if we can throw in just a couple of like blue static electric kind of color So I'm probably going to call this one. Could definitely work on this for like probably like five or six or seven or eight more hours to try to just like refine things further and like get some of those the shapes really feeling good. Oh, one last thing that I want to do actually before we call it is I really do want to see if I can add some coolness into the shadows try to give it a little bit of life that way. And maybe a little bit darker shadows in a couple of places. Hair is really pretty fun though, but it can be super frustrating and you really just kind of have to approach it like, I think a little more structured and systematic helps a lot. Could do a ton more work down in this area, in all areas of this thing, really. But okay, so let's see if we can. Let's take our color that we have here and just say make it more cool by making it gray. Let's see if maybe we can get a little bit more interest happening.
I'm just kind of graying it down a little bit. So you desaturate things by making it gray. In this instance, because we're working with reds, that desaturation is going to make it a lot cooler. If we had really cool shadows, that desaturation would actually make it look warmer. So it's a little bit of a brain bender, uh, at least color can, but I think at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty simple. It's all relative, relative relationships between warm and cool. I know that gets a little bit beyond the scope of just like drawing, but you guys will get to it eventually. I mean, I'm still learning all this stuff too, for sure. Can't never really stop learning it. So anyway, uh, I think that's going to be it, more or less. I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this one. I think. Go ahead and go super blue. Right there. Maybe right there. Looks like she's got like a neon light behind her or something. <laughs> this color would definitely be affecting the color of the hair if it were not, that were actually happening. But uh, but it's not. It's not. It's all good. Very close to her skin color, this dress her coat or whatever she's got on, abrigo. But... Let's see if we can quickly get it in. I think maybe we'll go more... Actually, that's more the color that she is. a little weird with the color dinner. Pretty fun. Oh, she's got like a little collar on as well. Hmm. This needs to be much darker. But it needs to be warmer. It's a little better. More yellow, actually, more greenish. Not that greenish, though. Let's go. Something like that looks pretty good. Under paintbrush is very nice. It's all kinds of crazy, sh crazy shadows coming off of her hair and stuff too. But I'm not gonna have time for that one. This collar is like a greenish. Looks pretty good. 
Pretty cool look. I think her neck is a little too long. I made it a little too long. Whoops. Let's leave it off the collar for now because that's going to create about 20 more minutes of more work, but that's okay. Um, that's it. Hair. That's kind of how you do it. That's how I do it. I'd say good luck.